Hello writers, I'm Sab John Irathatil, professional screenwriter and your personal story coach. In this episode, I'm trying to share with you how we as writers pragmatically shift our thoughts and ideas to written stories. And I would recommend you to watch till the end to experience the thrill and suspense of the story. Okay, I'm, I'm confident to write a crime thriller right now, with a lot of suspense and surprises, of course. At the same time, uh, apart from the emotional part of thriller, I need to find a focus to drive it forward with a direction and objective. I've already identified a world and characters by writing from my heart. I'm going to build the story using these pointers. As a writer, I get a thread from the support of my subconscious that his hands are shaky. But why should it shake? If he had to hide the truth it has to affect him so much, either by the nature of the truth or by the nature of his psyche, I had to, uh, I will add a snippet of what's going on through his mind. I'm going to add my first element of suspense, which arises out of Tony's inner conflict, fear. This is a cliched outcome, of course, repeated many times. But for me, I'm sustaining it as an element to a greater surprise. That's it. There you go. I've added a motive to instill an imminent danger, a graver conflict than whatever is already there. With this dialogue by George, we are taken to the threshold of the crime to think who could have killed and the reason for it. A great need to know factor. We are again building up on the possibility of the motive introduced and the gravity of the hidden truth. Basically, we are setting the present stage higher. Up till this moment, Tony was under the grip of an unexplained fear but now he changes his status to confrontation, which adds possibilities again for more and severe conflicts. Now, where should I go from here? What should be the crescendo of this crisis that I've written? It should surpass and grow from what I've presented so far, and it has to be against the reader's calculated conclusions. That's my choice, that's, that's my prerogative. I think I'm getting what I'm looking for. Yeah, this will definitely throw the audience of their tracks. All alone in the room, Tony looks at the half filled page he has typed, straining to direct his fingers to the tiny keys on his mobile phone. But this time his hands are shaky and the fingers unmanageable. He has to write the truth, first time ever so many days. I never thought it could happen. How can I ever, ever kill him? But I know I surely did. Tony needs a break, a splash of cold to soothe his burning eyes. The cold water from the bathroom tap stings his face, but his eyes badly need the cold. That's when Tony hears the bold knock on the front door. Oh my God, it could be Josh. Of course, he and Tony had a kind of deal, but he has decided to reveal the truth now. On the second knock, a lot louder to show Josh's violent impatience, Tony rushes to the front door and screams, Go away! I told you to leave me alone! The knocking intensifies. Tony can feel the horror build up within him. The knocks grow in bands, one after the other, and all of a sudden there is a dead silence. Tony waits a bit, pressing his ears to the door plank, to check if George is leaving. What's your darn problem, Tony? Why this hanky-panky all of a sudden? Goosebumps erupting all over. He slowly turns to face the voice, George. 
right behind him inside the room with a sinister look and a menacing revolver. You can't get over the guilt. You will never. You're a murderer. Josh makes a snap sound with his lips. Just like that you did it. Please stop. Tony immediately resumes typing the truth he wanted Shayla to read that morning. Let me read what you wrote. Josh snatches the mobile from Tony with a kind of vengeance to see what's on it. Tony in anger grabs the mobile back from Josh. I'm going to tell the truth to her. No more lying around beating around the bush. You give her that? What you wrote? I'll kill you. Tony looks at Josh for a moment as if to challenge him and put the mobile in his shirt pocket. I will kill you, Tony, with the same gun you used the other day. Josh's voice is subdued but harsh, his eyes a ball of fire. You go ahead and try. Tony is equally vicious now and bangs the door closed, leaving the room. He scurries down the stairs and suddenly stops, seeing a newspaper lying at the floor on the way. Tony looks bluntly at the big photo on the front page. It shows the picture of Josh lying dead, bleeding, his shirt stained red, and the caption read, Crime journalist shot dead. Yes, it's Josh for sure.